Hey everyone, Happy New Year. As a final video of the year, I wanted to talk about my everyday carry or my EDC. So stick around and let's get to it. Now, of course, there's stuff that I have in bags that I take to work um, that I can go over in separate videos. I, I want to go through car bags and, um, and personal EDC, but this is my personal carry. doesn't mean that I have all of these items with me at every single time, especially when it comes to firearms. You want to be very familiar with the laws, where you can and cannot carry these items. But on an ideal day, when I'm out and about with my family, this is the loadout that I have on my person, not off body not in a separate bag. These are things that I carry. These are just things that I have researched over time and found to be very, very useful, very handy, and it helped me be prepared and have peace of mind as I go through my day-to-day -day activities. So starting at the very top, one thing that is invaluable to me is my Skeletool. Um, it's by Leatherman. Now, there are other Leathermans out there. There's other Gerber tools. There's a lot of really cool tools out there. But I settled on the Leatherman Skeletool specifically because it is tiny. This thing is so light and so handy. It really only comes with three tools. So you have a one-handed knife, ready and accessible. It's a good blade for in a pinch. It's one hand use, liner lock, ready to go. You have a screwdriver tool. And right now I, I usually just end up carrying it with a flat head, but it does have storage right here for your Phillips head uh, attachments as well. And then of course, you have pliers and a wire cutter built in. Three of the most needed tools on a day-to-day -day basis. Again, there are other multi-tools that I even own and have in other bags, but as far as like a day-to-day, -day, I find that I'm almost using this every single day. There's something that comes up. Um, I generally will have a flashlight with me. Now, my evolution of flashlight carry has really changed. This is the Phoenix PD35. I love this flashlight. It takes an 18, 650 battery which is a rechargeable um, and these I mean it just it's an awesome power source okay this has a great waterproof rating it's an adjustable lumen count so this little button right here will actually adjust it from I think somewhere in the the 50 range all the way up to 800 lumens I would have to double check it also has a an option to press steady press and it'll give you a strobe um, just all around awesome tool to have with you. Now, this is smaller than my original TK-15. I tried carrying that for a little while. The TK-15 is a behemoth, so I don't recommend it for day-to-day -day carry. Even this one has been a little bit big. I do love just the awesome power of 800 lumens, but at the same time, it's bulky. So if, depending on your outfit, um, it can be very hard. I actually just came across this one right around Christmas time. This is the Streamlight Stylus Pro. And this thing's tiny. It works off of uh, AAA batteries, hits right about 95 lumens, so it's right in the range that you would want for uh, shooting, a, a low light shoot anyway. So I, I'm, I'm just going to start trying this here in the new year, 2017, and see how it does. Winter, summer, whatever it is, have a good pair of sunglasses with me. These happen to be the Oakley Fuel Cells. I ended up picking these up on LA Police Gear because they specifically have a Cerakote it actually says, yeah, caliber 556. Um, this was a special option that LA Police Gear had for a little while. These are polarized lenses, but I found that Oakley is extremely durable, so they're even great on the range. And their optics, the, the way that it focuses light through the lens is really good for your eyes. So you're not having to, uh, your eyes don't have to constantly adjust the image for your brain, so you're not gonna get a headache after wearing these for a long time. So. I'm a big proponent of pay a little bit extra, get a good pair of glasses that are actually healthy for your eyes, and you're protecting them all the time. I recently came across the Big Skinny. I found these guys on Amazon. Um, amazing reviews, and so I thought I'd have to check this out. My original wallet was double this size, even triple at times. The wallet itself starts super skinny, and so when you transfer everything in, it just ends up being tiny in your pocket. As you can see, I mean, that's that's a full loadout, guys. That is such a cool wallet option. I mean, I've been looking a little bit at the Magpul. 
that's kind of a cool wallet option, but so far I still need a billfold. I still need to be able to put money into the wallet and carry it around that way. So that's what I carry. Um, I am going to include my cell phone as part of the EDC. Um, obviously, if if things completely went to crap, um, <laughs> this is probably one of the first things that I would toss because they're so easily trackable. But in terms of day-to-day -day urban kind of preparedness and survival, this thing has so many cool tools, communication, compass, navigation, all of that. Um, I just find it to be indispensable. And so as far as my case, I'm using a Tech 21. If you can see that there, I love this case. I think in terms of drop protection, it's not going to be, you know, this isn't going to be your otter box, obviously, but it's got this uh, substance inside that actually absorbs an impact. And so as far as thinness, you can see it's really not much at all. This is a really cool case. doesn't add much to the outsides. And then, of course, I've got a cool protector, kind of a glass sheet on there that um, all around this has survived, you know, some ruggedness. Um, along with that is the watch. This has been my favorite up until really, really recently. This is the Sunto Core. I got in a Sahara Yellow. I really love this watch. It's got your built-in altimeter, barometer, compass. Um, really does a lot of cool stuff for work purposes and things like that. I have been carrying an Apple Watch. And um, same type of thing. I mean, super, super useful. I use this, again, because I'm in the tech industry. Um, my notifications, just all the little gadgetry that comes with it. This is what I've been carrying, but it's still, I still don't love it as much as my Sunto. When we go on an adventure, we go hiking, go outdoors. This is the one I'm taking because of the waterproof rating, because of the ruggedness and everything that it does for me. All right, as far as my keys, I'm still kind of going through an evolution here on my keys. So if you guys have suggestions, let me know. I mean, I do have another Leatherman right here on my keys. This is the Bruiser. The reason I have this on there, in addition to my Skeletool, is I found this to be TSA compliant. I do fly from time to time with my work, and I travel, and I find that I can go right through TSA, and that's been in multiple airports, um, with the Bruiser, as well as with my flashlight. No problem at all. These just don't set anything off, and, and they, they seem to be common items. Um, I also take through my bottle hook. It's really solid. It's got some good weight to it. Definitely could be, you know, <laughs> I don't know if you could use that as a weapon or not, but it helps me kind of loop it through my my jeans um, on a belt loop if I want to. It's got a bottle opener. It's just nice and solid. You don't get lost. And in terms of everything else, I mean, I just try to keep, obviously, I always have a USB. This is a 16 gigabyte Kingston. I always have that with me. I tend to use an S binder. And then my keys. I, again, I'm still kind of going through an evolution here. As you can see, this is a jumble of keys, but it works in my pocket the way I have it set up. And then last of all is I think one of the most crucial pieces of your EDC, which is self-defense. Oh, I almost forgot. I did a video on this previously, guys. So if you're familiar, you know my K-Bar TDI. Let's set that aside. That's a, a pretty big piece of my EDC as well. Firearm. This is a debated issue. And, and of course, guys, you know, follow your conscience as far as whether or not you're going to carry a firearm. Um, if you are, I'm a big believer of training. Owning a firearm uh, doesn't make you armed any more than owning a guitar makes you a musician. Okay, So if you're going to own one of these, I strongly suggest going and getting some training. Um, I tend to go down between 20 to 40 hours of uh, professional training per year. Um, I personally go down to front sight most of the time. I'm not a fanboy. I just happen to like the training that I've received there. Um, I do plan on taking some additional trainings. Hopefully, if I can find some force-on-force -force training centers here uh, locally, I would love to do that. But I found Front Sight to be very, very good, um, both for me and for my family. I've taken people down that have never held a gun before, and they have come out of a two-day and a four-day course just really comfortable, knowing their way around, being very proficient with a gun. Um, I personally like the Glock 43. That's not to say that it's better than the Shield. Personally, you know, when it comes to firearms, guys, don't shop based on price, shop based on comfort. You have to find a firearm that works for you, that's comfortable in the hand, that's going to be big enough or small enough for your personal carry needs. I tend to like a 9mm. Um, it's a smaller round, and again, that's another debated issue, but I tend to go for round count. Again, that's ironic, me talking about a single stack um, gun, 
but this thing kicks very, very well. It feels very comfortable in my hand. And of course, because I have a diminished round count, being a single stack magazine, I tend to carry two spare magazines with the Terran Tactical plus two base pads. Okay, so. Um, always hollow point ammunition. These happen to be the Winchester Train and Defend. Um, I've liked those. Personally, I've made some modifications to my Glock 43. I'm by no means done. Uh, there's still more that I'd like to do, but as you can see, I, I gave it a custom stipple job myself. I have been taking a Dremel here to the handguard. Let's go ahead and chamber check. There's nothing inside. For anybody that knows Glocks very well, their reliability is legendary, and that's part of why I use it as my EDC. Like I said, I'm not a fanboy. I happen to like all the major brands. There's guns that are fantastic from each of them. I just wanted something that I know is going to go bang every single time I press the trigger. Um, but I have put in a Silencer Co. threaded barrel, not only because I own a suppressor, but also because this thing is a match grade barrel and it has tightened up my groups immensely. Personally, I blacked out the back U-shape of, uh, the, the, of the sights here um, because my, I want my focus to immediately go to that front sight. I do love this gun. It fits my hand very, very well. It feels very comfortable. It shoots like a bigger gun than it is, but because of its size, I can carry this very, very easily, very concealed, even in deep concealment if I need to. A lot of the time, I just tend to put it into a Kydex pocket holster and run like that. But I do have, you know, some inside the waistband that are, that help as well. Again, get trained, get comfortable and proficient with your firearm if you do decide to carry, and always carry at least one spare magazine, guys, because no matter the caliber, whether you're talking about 9mm, 40, 45 even, statistically speaking, you're going to need multiple rounds to stop a threat in case there's multiple assailants, there's multiple threats to your life in that instance. And then of course my backup is my K-Bar TDI. If I cannot get to my gun, if it's close quarters, um, this can be deployed and, and used in a close quarter environment very, very easily. So guys, that's my EDC. Again, this extends to other elements like my car bag. It extends to elements like a first aid kit and things like that that are in my work bag. But for on-body carry, this is what I go with on a day-to-day -day basis. I would love to hear your thoughts, suggestions that you've come across. Feel free to ask me questions about any of these items, and I'd be happy to answer, give you my thoughts on that. Thanks, guys, and Happy New Year.